guess that you're in the right place. You're watching FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. It is week 10 of the NFL season. I have no idea how we got here this fast. We've got some huge matchups on the schedule. You know we're getting to all of them. And you know what we do. We're breaking down and betting the biggest games, handing out our experts' best bets, and dropping DFS best value plays as well. I'm Lisa Kearney hanging out with you from the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. And as always, we got to get to our guys in Los Angeles. Missing them, holding it down in our L.A. studio. Ice Cold Exacta, our sports betting expert, Dave Weaver, and former NFL wideout Super Bowl champion, James Jones. Guys, as always, we've also got our sports talk radio host, Andrew Filipponi, joining us from Pittsburgh. And the face of Marquee Sports Network, our NFL expert, Cole Wright in Chicago. Guys, we are all over the place it is week 10. Let's kick this thing off. More Ways to Win starts now. And we are getting right to this monster matchup ahead of us in Buffalo. The 7-1 Vikings at the 6-2 Bills. A huge game here between two division leaders. And, of course, you all know the big news here in this one. Josh Allen has been day-to-day -day with a right elbow injury suffered in last week's loss to the Jets. Backup Case Keenum would get the start against his former team if Allen is not able to go. And then for the Vikings, business as usual, really. Justin Jefferson is on fire, putting up more than 100 yards receiving in four of the last five games. That one game he didn't get to 100, he did finish with 98. So we're going to be a little picky here. Uh, we're going to bet this game. We're going to give it the Judge James treatment. You guys, we're going back to it. Get the gavel. Dave and Pony, you each pick a side and argue your case. Judge James will then make a ruling on who wins. Dave, you're going to be presenting your case first. The Bills are a three and a half point Home favorite, Dave, which side do you like here? Yeah, so that line is telling you that Josh Allen's not playing because mm. this line mm. is 7 8 probably yeah. if Josh Allen is playing. But I'm okay with that. I still like the Bills. Look, this is one of the best bounce back teams I have ever seen. Yes, they lost last week against the Jets, and they're most not likely to me going to have Josh Allen. But this is a team when they lose, they come back on fire, and it's usually not their offense, it's usually their defense. The last seven times that they have lost, lost the game and they've been favored in the next game they've given up 12 points a game so and they're 6 one one against the spread in that span so I think they're just going to be fired up here defensively this is a tough spot for Minnesota it's the first time all year that they've had back-to-back -back games on the road as well so I'm adding it all up pony and I think Minnesota is going to have a hard time putting points on the board I disagree. I think all that bounce back information is uh, tied into having one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL uh, under center. You're right about the line. This was up towards a touchdown, and then as more news has trickled in, it's dropped to three and a half. I'm sure Vikings fans will feel nostalgic watching Case Keenum and Stephon Diggs, the guys that teamed up on the Minneapolis Miracle. Since that moment, Case Keenum's not been a good quarterback. His record is nine in 17. And as we saw in Dallas with Cooper Rush, a strong running game helps a backup quarterback, a great defense. Well, there is no running game in Buffalo without Josh Allen. He is the team's leading rusher. I think Minnesota goes to Orchard Park and wins the game outright. Take that, Judge James. How that gavel for me, baby. Can't talk to the judge like that. Hey, J. J yeah, I have to piggyback what Pony just said because you <laughs> brought up a really good point. There is no running game yeah. without Josh Allen. You guys, I just saw yes, this statistic is. on ESPN this morning. Josh Allen has accounted for 81.7% of the Bills' total offensive yards this season. Without him, what are yeah. we getting? All You're right, making James, my point. You're what is your it. judgment? Well, you know, me and Dave, the only one that got yes. up and came to the studio today, you know, but the Buffalo Bills, right, number one, they are a totally different team at home. If this game was in Minnesota, then I would be going with Minnesota. But this game is in Buffalo. Buffalo is a totally different team at home. And this is the main reason why you go and you get defense, right? These are the times for Von Miller and Leslie Frazier and this defense to step up. But 
Kirk Cousins has not won a big time game yet since we've been talking on TV and I don't expect him to win another one or win one especially down there in Buffalo I don't think it's going to happen I think Buffalo defense gets after him they jump out on him and they make it really really hard on the Minnesota Vikings and the Buffalo Bills win this game good ruling you must not have seen Kirk on the Brutal. plane doing the thing huh <laughs> I seen him gigging Ooh, he's I seen so him gigging loose. with his chains on he is loose <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to appeal right, guys, this there one. You have it. Dave wins the fr- <laughs> Dave wins the first case with his argument. Bills giving the points here that line right now three and a half. All right, now to the only undefeated team left in the league. We got to talk about these eight no Eagles hosting the Commanders in the spotlight. This one on Monday Night Football. What more can you say about this Philly team? Top three offense. Top three defense. Quarterback Jalen Hurts has the second shortest odds to win MVP here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. And then you look at Washington. They've had a streaky season, right? That four-game losing streak early on, followed by a three-game win streak. Here they are sitting at four and five. Uh, Cole and Dave will be presenting their cases for this one. Cole, biggest line of the week here with this game. Eagles are giving ten and a half. How are you seeing it? Lisa, I tell you what, there's a lot of fool's gold going around last week, and I fell a hook, line, and sinker (laughs) for that Washington iron pie right. Remember when I told you that the commanders were better than Minnesota in overall offense, defense, passing, and rushing? Well, they were for three and a half quarters. That's the biggest problem. The commanders, and they've allowed 57 fourth quarter points this season, and uh, when you're taking a look at tackle football, and that's not good. Meanwhile, their Sunday opposition absolutely thriving. Like you said, the only undefeated squad in all of the league. That's what the Eagles are. And they've only allowed 20 or more points in a game twice. In both of those instances, they were both flukes because it was Detroit and Jacksonville. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. And uh, this week, all I think the commanders are is another spoke in that Philadelphia wheel. It's going to be a beatdown. 31-17, birds are flying. That's the thing, though. There haven't been many beatdowns this year in the NFL for teams that are supposed to be beating down teams. You know, the 10-point the favorites have not delivered. Last week, there were three of them. Underdogs covered all of them. And in this case, this year, five and nine for your favorites, 10 points or more. I think it's too many points. Here are my facts about this game. The Commanders are playing very good defense against the run the last three weeks. They've given up just 3.6 yards a carry on the ground. That's fourth best in the NFL on that span. They're 3-0-1 against the spread the last four weeks. And the double-digit dogs have been making me cash. So I'm going to stick with it. And, uh, Cole, I, you might not be able to see it yet. I'm trying to work on my Movember <laughs> here for you. Okay. It's, it's okay. Check back in about two weeks, and you might be able to tell I have a mustache. Uh, but I'm going to go with it for the rest of the month. Just there for, we go. Just there for we go. Cole. I like it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> so I'm going Washington. All right, so, so James, out. definitely factor that in yeah. to your judgment here. <laughs> yeah, what a, what a ver- All right, what you're a, up. Yeah, James, the, get the gavel. Yes, the gavel and the verdict is in, yeah. right? And I am rocking with my dog Dave over here. And the main reason why is, number one, how they are playing for Heineke, right? This team has, has battled for him. This team is making every game ugly. Like, Cole's right. They're not finishing the game. They didn't finish the game last week in the fourth quarter. But they are making these games ugly. And it is a division game. I am never taking a 10-point 10-point margin in a division game. They are too hard to win. You know each other too well. Yes, Jalen Hurts playing at an MVP level, but you know each other too well. This game is going to be extremely close. I like the commanders in this one. They battling behind their quarterback. They playing extremely hard. They are stopping the run, and they are making games ugly. And the Eagles have not been in too many ugly games, Lisa. I'm rocking with Washington. I like this, Judge. Okay, okay. Case two is closed. <laughs> Dave now two and two for two. Uh, winning this argument, taking the commanders, getting those ten and a half points. And James, you made a very good point. These division games can get ugly. They know each other too well. Uh, all right, you guys, let's keep it going now. We got to get to the six and two Cowboys. Heading to Lambeau Field to take on the three and six Packers. A shocking season here for Green Bay. They've lost five in a row. Things went from bad to worse last week. The offense scoring nine points. Nine. Nine points against a Lions team that currently is giving up the most yards and the most points in this league. You guys, now Aaron Rodgers in that offense going up against Micah Parsons and that Dallas defense that leads the NFL 
in sacks. All right, you guys. Pony and Cole, this game is for you. Dallas, a five-point road favorite. Pony, you're up first in Judge James' courtroom. State your case. Well, part of being a good lawyer is knowing how to get on your judge's good side, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to start and take Green Bay, and it's not just because of James' bias. It's because I actually think that they can cover this spread. They've only been an underdog three times this year, despite their lousy record. And the Packers are 2-1 and one against the spread as an underdog. They covered against the Bills, and they beat the Bucks outright. They've only played three games at home at Lambeau because of the, the, the London game. So they haven't had the friendly confines of Lambeau Field enough. And this is going to be Dak's first road game of the year. He beat the Lions. He beat the Bears. Now he's got to go to Lambeau. I know it's not December or January, but I still think that's kind of a test. Too many points. Give me the Packers because I think they can win the game. All right, Pony. Well, you know, I, I love to agree with you, but here I'm going to have to uh, go the other direction because uh, to quote Rick Pitino, uh, James Jones not walking through that door because uh, <laughs> Rodgers and Green Bay, clearly a team in shambles right now. They had three wins, and in those three wins, they've done a good job of limiting the damage, but in those six losses, well, uh, all allowing close to 24 points per game. And not just that, Aaron Rodgers, it almost looks like his mystique has worn off a little bit. Four picks over the last two games, and uh, that's terrible news with that Dallas defense on autopilot. Get a load of this. 15 defenders with double-digit tackles, and you pair that with their 33 sacks overall as a team. It's going to be a long day at the office for A.A. Ron Packers. They're going to put up points, unlike last week, but Dallas, at the end of the day, they're just too good. Cowboys, they're going to get the win in this one, 28-21. Bank it. Mm-hmm. James, you're dialed into that Green Bay squad. Uh, you know the drill. Who won this case? Man, you know, never in my day I think I would go against AR-12 oh, and Aaron Rodgers. No, wow. <laughs> oh, no. Never in Whoa. my day. But the verdict is in, and I am rocking with Cole. I, I, I don't know what to think of my Packers right now, right? I mean, they're just not making the plays. They should have had 30 points, but, I mean, should have had 30 points a couple weeks ago too, right? But they're just not making the plays. <laughs> they're not making them on the defensive side of the ball when they got to. They're definitely not making them on the offensive side of the ball. You lose Rashawn Gary for the season. This team is in trouble. And I just love what the Dallas Cowboys bring, right? The Dallas Cowboys know who they are. They run the football. They play good defense. Their quarterback is going to make some throws. But they know exactly who they are walking into every football game. The Packers don't know exactly who they are right now. And I know Coach Mike is coming back to Lambeau Field, and I want to take my Green Bay Packers, but I just can't until they prove to me that they are ready to go to get this thing turned around. So I am rocking with Cole. I got the Cowboys in this one. Wow. Never did Smart I think we see the day. I mean, you can, you, you can love them all you want, but they still got to earn it, you know? All right, so the final case goes to Cole <laughs> picking the Cowboys, giving those yeah. points. All right, court is like adjourned it. for the day, but there is plenty more breakdowns coming up on the show. Before we get to our next matchup, I want to drop a quick reminder about FanDuel's special no-sweat first bet promotion. You've heard us talking about this all season long. FanDuel's given new customers up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. I call it the best mulligan in the business because it is new users can take advantage of the no sweat first bet just place a cash bet with FanDuel Sportsbook and if you don't win your first bet you're going to automatically get your stake back in free bets it's that easy so download the app and play with us today Yes, it's week 10. We've been saying it this whole show so far. We have so much more coming for you here on More Ways to Win. Up next, we've got two dogs, two favorites that are locks to cash. Who? Got to stick around to find out. That's tease in TV lingo. Plus, Dave's big payday parlay. He is dropping it for you, turning 20 bucks into thousands. It's coming up next right here on More Ways to Win. Stay right there. All right, let's roll on here on More Ways to Win. It is week 10. Thanks for hanging with us. Underdogs, favorites, which one should you bet? Well, obviously, the answer is both, but you have to find the best value. So here we are giving out our best bets for each in this week's Dog and Pony Show segment. You know how we would do this. Pony is playing the part of Pony. Our special guest, Chad Millman, will be bringing the dogs. Great having Chad back with us, Chief Content Officer of the Action Network. Chad, 
Hold on to your picks for just a second. I'm going to come to you in a moment. Pony, you're going to start us off with your favorite, favorite here for week 10. Who do you like? Well, I brought this up a couple of weeks ago with Chad. After watching the Jets Patriots, it made no sense that New England was favored in New York, and then they won handily with some Zach Wilson turnovers. I'm going to say the same thing about this game. How are the Bucs favored? They haven't covered a spread since week two. They pushed last week against the Rams. So I dug into the numbers. I think it's a defensive thing. This is fifth in scoring defense, Tampa. This is fifth in passing defense. Geno Smith, what an amazing story. But statistically, he has not seen a defense like the one he's going to see in Munich. Brady is 3-0 and in international games. So I'm with the odds makers here. They're trying to tell me something. I'm going to pay attention. Give me the Bucks minus three. Okay, Chad, you're going the other way for this one. Explain. Yeah, look, this is the hardest game on the board, right? And Lisa, we talk about this all the time. Sports betting is a lot like investing. And you want to be able to time the market. You want to get off a team when you think it's peaked. You want to get on a team when you think it's about to take a ride. The Seahawks are one of those teams that a lot of handicappers, a lot of wise guys are thinking about, have we peaked with the Seahawks? I am not one of them. I am buying the Seahawks at plus three this weekend in Munich. This is just a better team than Tampa Bay right now. And I understand what Pony is saying about Geno Smith and the competition he's faced. But this team, this Seahawks team, fourth overall in DVOA, which is a very fancy betters math way of saying they are an overall really good team. Their defense the past five weeks is fourth in defensive DVOA. Again, another fancy metric to say this defense is really, really good. And also look at what they've done. The two losses they've had in the past six weeks, they lost to the Saints, they lost to the Falcons. Both of those losses were in the final moments of the game. This is a team that just knows how to win. As an underdog on a neutral field, they are the better team. The Bucs are getting the advantage of being Tom Brady and having a cardiac win this past week. Give me the Seahawks plus three. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, Pony, give me your second favorite. Favorite here for week 10. Yeah, where's the love for Tua? Tua and the Dolphins are just a small favorite against the Browns. Since Tua's come back, the Dolphins are averaging 27 points per game, and they've been outstanding uh, to the point where Tua's QBR and passer rating are the highest in the NFL, better than Mahomes, better than Allen. It's also a revenge game, because remember last year with Brian Flores, Tua was healthy, and he kept Jacoby Brissett in initially. And now Brissett is the Browns quarterback, so that's a juicy subplot to this game. I think Tua's going to want to score 40 on the Browns, and I expect back in Miami that he's going to have a huge day. Okay, okay. I like it. Chad, give me another underdog you like for this week. All right, I'm going in Pony's backyard. I'm taking the Steelers plus one and a half, and this line actually opened at three. It's moved in the Steelers' direction. There's three reasons for this right now. One, Mike Tomlin said it the other day. He's optimistic T.J. Watt is going to come back from his pectoral injury in this game. The Steelers' defense is just significantly different and significantly better, probably a top-five defense when he is on the field. Two, Kenny Pickett has been a gamer when he has been on the field. You threw him into the Jets game. He nearly brought them back. He played tough against the Dolphins. He beat the Bucks. Now he's had a week off to learn a little bit more of the offense, get a little more comfortable. I like him in that system. And then three, this is a Mike Tomlin rah-rah spot. Nobody in the NFL gets their team more ready to play as an underdog than Mike Tomlin. The past five years, during his career, after week five in this spot as an underdog, covers at a 71% clip in a big sample size. I'm not talking 10 games. I'm talking 50, 60 games. So I like the Steelers as plus one and a half this week. Okay, small line there too. All right, Pony, quick recap of your two favorites before we move on. You like... The Bucks uh, giving the points against the Seahawks in Germany on Sunday morning. Uh, you also like the Dolphins giving the points to the Browns. Got to give some love to Tua. Um, and then, Chad, quick look at your dogs here. You actually like the Seahawks getting points against the Bucks, And the Steelers getting points at home against the Saints. That line again right now, 
one and a half. Awesome stuff, guys. You can bet these dogs and favorites are right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And of course, you can get more of Chad's insights by listening to the Favorites podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Also, make sure to download the Action Network app for expert picks, live scores, and stats. Chad, great to see you as always. And we'll see you right back here next week. Now it is time for Dave's Big Payday Parlay. It's pretty self-explanatory, right? You've heard of people betting just a few dollars to win tens of thousands mm -hmm. of dollars. Well, parlaying a bunch of bets is how they do it. So Dave is going to show us how he does it. Give us your Big Payday Parlay for Week 10, Dave. Let's do it. We're going to throw $20 at it. 20 And Let's see do it. if we can make a few thousand. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll monitor what's paying down there yeah. over by James, but... We're going to play all money lines, so we're not even dealing with any spreads. These teams just need to win. We'll start a little simple here. The Chiefs are going to smack down the Jaguars. Ooh, you think it's going to be a beatdown? Heavy huh? favorite. You. I only I'm made four dollars on that right. with my twenty dollars. Uh, I'm going to go with another favorite in the Giants cruising against the Texans, running the ball, getting back on track after that loss. He's got to be in two Seattle. locks right here. So those look like locks. Yeah, twenty dollars like turns into thirty-five. Uh, the Bears. The last six times that they've been a favorite, and it's not often. But when they're supposed to win, they Justin, win. Justin Fields is going crazy right now. I absolutely week. love it. Those look like three locks to so me right So there's favorite, there. favorite, favorite. Now yeah. we'll throw in an underdog, and it's a slight one that uh, Chad was just talking about. I like the Steelers yeah. as well. I love those baby home dogs getting just a little bit of plus money right there. Now we're up to $125. I'll never go against Mike Tomlin. Watch love what it. happens here on this second page where we get in a little bit of prices. The Bills. Um, again, I think their defense, even yeah. if Josh Allen doesn't play, is going to be good enough to beat Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. I'm a Vikings guy. I yeah. think they're going to go all the way to the Super Too Bowl, but this is a tough spot Too for them. Too much bills at home. Okay, now That's we're good. going with the underdogs. I, I think the Rams are done right now. Ooh. Stafford's in concussion protocol. Yes. He may or may not play. Even if he plays... I think the Cardinals are the better team. I've never seen a team win a Super Bowl and then look like they just don't know how to win the next season. That's Can't how the Rams are right now. Right. They lost the a Cardinals. lot too many key pieces. Yeah. So that's an underdog. Um, you pick the Packers every week. They're losing. I love the fact that you don't like them this week. Yeah. You know what happens. You already They're know, They're going to win. That's, so that's, the Packers. That's why I do that. That's I the Cowboys. That. Now we're up to over $1,000, $1,300. And my upset of the week. I love the Chargers to beat the 49ers. Ooh. This is a seven point spread. They're going to cover and they're going to win. And when they do, yeah. now that $20 is up 47. Hundred. I hope it comes down to that Chargers now. I do too. For your money, you know, <laughs> make you sweat a little bit. We but came I like close last week, by the way. <laughs> Titans almost yes. beat the Chiefs. Should have. And the Bears almost beat Justin, um, Justin Fields had the Dolphins in the, yep. the other six one. So Lisa, we've been knocking yeah. on the door. Maybe we can uh, get the money this week. I know. Dave, I've seen your tickets cash. You've actually showed them to me in the past. Uh, very exciting. I love seeing that stuff. Great stuff by Dave. And look at those odds skyrocket. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Tail Dave. Her, hey, create your own parlay to win big on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Of course, you can do it right now. Make sure you get those in before kickoffs on Sunday. And you can also get in on the fun with Daily Fantasy as well. See, I told you you're in the right place. Fun for all here at the FanDuel Sportsbook and on this show. FanDuel has a a bunch of DFS contests live right now where you can win thousands of dollars on FanDuel.com. The key to success is value at each position. Jim Sonis is our senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. He's got his best value plays for Week 10. Hello again, Jim. Good to see you. Thanks, Lisa. This is one of the weeks where I think we could see a lot of value pop up as the week goes along. But at least for right now, I do think we have three pretty good value plays in the guys we're about to discuss. Starting off with Dalton Schultz, tight end here for the Cowboys. $5,500 has had a really good role in two games with Dak Prescott being back. Schultz's target share in those games is 24%. Facing out with the Packers here, good spot for a tight end. So Dalton Schultz, to me, a good way to save salary at a pretty thin position. A wide receiver, I want to go to Jerry Judy coming in at $6,400. It's a low Low scoring game for sure, but Judy's had a very good role, at least recently. He's played two games with both Greg Dalsich and Russell Wilson. In those two games, Judy has a 36% deep target share with a 28% overall target share. $64, not too bad. I also don't mind Dalsich or Cortland Sutton on this same team. At running back, I want to go to Jeff Wilson coming in at $6,500. He led the team in snaps in his debut this past week and could see his role expand in week number 10. 
The Dolphins facing off with the Browns. That's a great spot to target running back. So Jeff Wilson, we haven't seen a ton just yet, but I think we could see his role go up. And I want to buy in at $6,500 as part of a great offense and what could be a pretty fun game. I love those plays, Jim. Thank you. Set your lineups now, FanDuel.com, and follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Sonis. And, of course, check out his Covering the Spread podcast as well, wherever you get your podcasts. All right, y'all, up next, the Chiefs eked out an overtime win last week. Can Patrick Mahomes and those Chiefs cover a big number against Jacksonville? We will answer that question for you. More game previews coming up, plus our experts hand out their best bets of the week. Coming in hot with 100 bucks worth of bets for you to cash on a spread money line and total. We'll be right back to break it all down for you. Welcome back to FanDuel TV and more ways to win. It's time for our betting experts to go against our ex-player in a betting debate based on really eye test and, of course, a lot of experience. A lot of experience, James. Fist bump. Each of our betting experts are going to go toe-to-toe with James. Nine-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champ. I told you you need to just start wearing your jersey on the show so we can, you know, rip through. Uh, rip through your stats here. Uh, you guys are going to state your case. Stand by your story. We're going to settle up next week. Got it? All right. Let's get these guys in here. We're starting our expert versus ex-player challenge with the Jaguars at the Chiefs. Arrowhead is going to be on fire. Jags are 3-6. and six. They ended a five-game losing streak with a win against the Raiders last week. The Chiefs are 6-2. and two. They have the top-scoring offense in the league coming off a big game where they won in overtime. Dave, Kansas City is giving 9.5 at home. How are you playing this one? I, I like playing underdog when there's big spreads but I can't do it in this one because Trevor Lawrence against Patrick Mahomes yeah. that would be like uh, you against me in a beer drinking contest you have no chance James. No chance. I mean no chance Trevor Lawrence three of the last six games he hasn't even got to 175 yards passing in, in those six games he has 1300 yards in Mahomes last three games he has 1200 yards the the Jaguars strength of schedule is the second worst in the NFL they've had an easy schedule in their three and six now they're playing a real team in the Chiefs I think this is going to be something like 41 to 10 I mean if you pick the Jags I would be really surprised well you are going to be very surprised how can you not at all okay, no good. I am not going against Patrick Mahomes Thank and you. the Kansas City Chiefs especially in this one right I seen the Raiders the Raiders went down the field on the Jacksonville Jaguars at will Devontae Adams is still wide open in that football game yes they made a couple plays to finish the Raiders and win that game. Travis Etienne had a really good game running the ball, but this Kansas City Chiefs team is on a whole different level. And you're going to Arrowhead. You're right, Dave. This is going to be a beat down. Yeah. I got Kansas City. And we got a gasp out of Lisa. Day. She thought you were picking against her no. again. <laughs> So I'm talking about. Okay, you guys know what side to be on. Thank you. Pony, you're up next for our expert uh, for our next game here. An interesting matchup here between the five and three Chargers, the four and four 49ers. Let's break it down for you. Los Angeles has won four of five, including three straight road wins. They're going to look at you. The Niners here in the defense is carrying them, ranked number one in total defense, number one in rushing defense. Pony, San Francisco is a seven point home favorite. You're up. Well, at least as per usual, your research, your stats, they tell the story that rushing defense is a big deal because Austin Eckler is really the only source of offense for the Chargers right now. We still think Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are going to miss this game. And if you flip it with the Niners, we're going to see their fully loaded offense completely healthy for the first time. Debo Samuel healthy, Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Williams at left tackle, I think the Niners at home get it done big. I'm laying the big number, James. I am with you. You just cannot go against that, right? I mean, yes, this Chargers team found a way to win late in that Falcons game, but the Falcons are not the San Francisco 49ers. The San Francisco 49ers play defense. How are you going to score points on this Niner defense without your two best weapons out there at the wide receiver position in Mike Williams and Keenan Allen? I just don't see it happening. I see this possibly being... 10 points for the Chargers offense, and that is not going to get it done against the Niners. And you just talked about Christian McCaffrey, Debo, Kittle. Like, it is over 
for the Chargers. The Niners are going to win this game big, and the Niners are going to let everybody know that we are here to take the NFC West, and we probably going to take the NFC, period. Mm. They're starting to get that steam. Okay, Cole, you're up tapping in for Pony here. We touched on this game a bit earlier in the show. Time now to really break it down. First regular season NFL game in Germany, 6-3 and three Seahawks against the 4-5 and five Bucks. Seattle has now won four in a row. Kenneth Walker is averaging 106 yards rushing in those games. He has six total touchdowns. He's absolutely rolling. As for the Bucs, they've got a quarterback that can throw it. Yes, we know, but they're struggling to run the ball, ranking dead last in the league in rushing. Cole, this Seahawks team still not getting a lot of respect. They're sitting there as three-point dogs on Sunday morning in Munich. How do you see it? Well, Lisa, I'm never going to get fast food with you because you take all the nuggets right off of my plate right there. Like you said, <laughs> Kenneth Walker over his last four, 106 rushing yards per game. And taking a look at this matchup, it's a battle of two first-place teams, but it's Seattle looking more like the contender, and it's uh, Tampa Bay right now checking in at pretender status. Now, when you take a look at uh, Gino, what he's been able to do, he's a shoe in for comeback player of the year. Combine that with Walker running the rock. But hold on a second. The Bucks uh, they're allowing 313 yards per game despite losses in three of the last four. Well, it's the perfect time for Tom Brady and Tampa to do an about face right here because uh, five of their last eight, they're versus teams that have sub 500 records in three of those contests. Uh, don't look now, but their division game. So, Tom, he's going to make it back to back weeks where he's in the black and he's going to do it on foreign soil in Germany. Bucks win this one 24 20. James, I know you're feeling me. You know what? It's, it's really kudos to Tom Brady, right? Because Tom Brady still has the world believing that he's going to win football games. Tom Brady is not playing good football right now. That Bucks offense is garbage right now. They should have lost last week. I still don't know how the Rams gave that game up. That's why Jalen Ramsey came out and said, the defense should never have to go back on the field. You get a turnover with a minute left in the game. The Bucks, the last five weeks have looked absolutely garbage. And we got to start giving credit to this Seattle Seahawks team, right? Geno Smith is playing better than Tom Brady. He's playing better than a lot of quarterbacks in the National Football League right now. He's winning games strictly on his right arm, making plays to lock it. And DK Metcalf, and you already talked to Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker, obviously Offensive Rookie of the Year, playing at a high, high level. This Seattle Seahawks team, and it's crazy we saying it because we did not think we would be saying this before the season started, but they are a way better, and I'm going to say it again, way better better football team than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers right now. I am taking Geno Smith because he ain't rolled back yet and he's not going to ride back. I'm taking Geno and, and the Seahawks in this one. You know, I, I, my cameraman here, Charlie, is sitting here taking notes because he was asking before in the break, like, am I starting Geno Smith this week? I don't know. I'm like, you're starting Geno Smith. So thank you, James, for backing that up for me. All right, now let's get to our best bets. Our experts are giving them out in the form of a spread, money line, and total bet. We've done this every season on the show. It's tons of fun, part of our weekly competition where each of the guys gets 100 virtual dollars for those three bets. Good week for both of you guys, by the way. You went five and one combined. The one Ooh. that hit on all three bets, Andrew Filippone, give it up. You have the Bears getting the points, Jags on the money line, and the Colts Pats under winning more than 96 bucks on your $100 bet. So, Pony, take that victory lap and put that 100 virtual dollars on a spread, money line, and total bet for this week. Where's it going? I need some electrolytes because I think that's six in a row. That's two straight victory laps here for me. So I'm red hot. Here's who I like in my picks this week. I'm going with Jeff Saturday. They need to block up front the most expensive offensive line in the NFL. Jonathan Taylor hasn't had a 100 yard game since week one. I think the Colts cover on the road against Vegas. Other than the Raiders, all they do is blow games and play close games. Give me Jeff Saturday's Colts. On the money line, this one might surprise you. I like the Broncos in Tennessee. Yeah, Ryan Tannehill still limited. If it's Malik Willis, he can't really throw the ball effectively yet. He's still a rookie, a very raw one at that. Denver's defense, second in scoring defense. Give me the Broncos. And last but not least, the over. I expect to shoot out in Jacksonville, Kansas City. Even if the Chiefs get a big lead, Dave, I think we're going to see some cosmetic touchdowns from Jacksonville that put this game over.
James does not like your Jeff Saturday pick, by the way. You already got an emoji coming in. Uh, I'm going to go to the Bills as my best bet. I thought the spread would probably be closer to eight if Josh Allen plays. It's low, but I don't care about the quarterback situation because the Bills are going to win on defense in this game. They are not going to let what happened last week happen again. They are always bounced back with a big win following a loss. So $50 on the Bills to cover that small spread at home against the Vikings. My money line play, I am not a believer right now in the Los Angeles Rams. I think that Arizona is going to come into SoFi and win that game. $25 on the Cardinals and my total, much like last week where the Dolphins gave up a lot of points to the Bears and won the game. I think that could happen again now against the Browns. I see this being touchdown after touchdown after touchdown between Cleveland and Miami. So my last $25 goes on the over there. Those are some really fun ones. Some interesting strategies. Yes, we're going to see which one is the best after this weekend. Of course, we will air the results here on next week's show. Hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook app now to place your bets before kickoffs. I like those, and I even I especially love Pony uh, needing those electrolytes. We'll see if he needs another cup of that next week. Coming up here on More Ways to Win, it's time to put some teams on upset alert. James and Cole give out their money line moneymakers for Week 10. Stay right there. We're coming right back. All right, everybody, welcome back to More Ways to Win here on FanDuel TV. Always love having you with us. We're rolling on here in Week 10 and shouting out some of our betting markets with rapid-fire predictions. Fifth gear, let's go, guys. Got to get you in here. You know the drill. I give you the line. You give me your pick, 15 seconds or less. And we're cutting you off. Okay, Pony, three and five Broncos at the five and three Titans. Titans, two and a half point favorites. Broncos fans know this. Denver plays close games. Four of their games have been decided by three points or less. Take the Broncos. Cole, come to you in Chicago. Bears are three point home favorites against the Lions. I have since we heard 20 rushes from 10 yards or greater for Justin Fields, so you can expect some more fireworks. This one, uh, not going to be as close as some people think. Uh, Lions with a hangover right about now. Bears win 27-17, despite Detroit getting it done versus Green Bay. Okay, Pony, you're in Pittsburgh, so you get this one. Steelers, one-and-a-half-point underdogs against the Saints. Yeah, really a surprising line with T.J. Watt coming back, but remember this, Steelers 31st in scoring offense, 28th in total offense. I don't trust them. I'm going to go with the Saints. Okay, Dave, you're up. The Giants are five and a half point home favorites against the Texans. Well, the uh, one win Texans control their own destiny right now for that number one pick, and I think they'll be that much closer to it after losing this game as well. 24 10 Giants, the Texans pass offense just abysmal. All right, great stuff by you guys. Thank you. And as mentioned, uh, Giants are at home this week, which means the Meadowlands going to be rocking. So if you're headed to MetLife Stadium or just looking for a bumping spot to take in all the games this NFL Sunday, this is it. And if you hop on my Instagram, Lisa Kearney, I show you a behind-the-scenes relation to relationship between MetLife and the FanDuel Sportsbook. We're in the same parking lot. The FanDuel Sportsbook book located just across that parking lot from MetLife. Great spot to hang before, during, and after all the games this week. And you can see why. Come cheer on your favorite teams and players here while enjoying food, drinks, placing quick bets, dozens of self-betting machines. They're literally all around me in this uh, VIP section that we're shooting the show from right now. We've also got friendly window service here. So grab your friends and family. Come out for an awesome time on Sunday or any day of the week. The FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands is open seven days a week. And again, right across the parking lot from MetLife Stadium. All right, y'all, let's get back to sports betting here and focus on some money line money makers for you right now. You know how much I love this plus money. We're giving them the bet emoji treatment as well. All right, you guys. Cole, I'm coming to you first for your upset pick. You're on the hot seat here, and after your pick, the guys will react with the appropriate emoji. You know how we do this. No pressure, no surprises. What you got? All right, well, the Vikings, uh, they showed an unreal ability so far this season to go out there and win close games. Now, they've won six straight, and all those W's have come 
by one score, eight points or less. Now, the Bills, make no mistake, they're one of the best home teams in all of the league, just one of three squads currently undefeated at the house. Now, I know uh, they've only played two teams above 500, but all you can do is play who is ever on your schedule, and that's exactly what they've done. And even if it's only for this week, uh, these two teams, they're going to be affected by what went down last week. Buffalo, uh, they're going to... Well, well, they're going to go out there with a hangover. Vikings, they win this ball game 28-24. Believe it or not, I, I can't believe I'm even saying it. I mean, either. I love it. Well, Great job, Thank Cole. you, Pony. Thank Great you. Great minds think Thank alike. You. No, they are not That's scoring right. 28 points against that Buffalo defense. Yeah, bet on Case oh, Keener, Dave. Go. That's always a winning strategy. Just betting on Buffalo's defense. Yes, and uh, you and yeah. me both, Dave, because just like the world, we're still waiting for Kirk Cousins to show up in a big-time game. Yep. The only big-time game where the lights are on and he had a little pressure on him this year was the Eagles, and Lord have mercy. Did that he defense look let the garbage, Jets go 96 right? yards in the fourth quarter, Dave. He that is going to struggle out there in Buffalo. Yep. I don't – well, I'm confused. <laughs> no. Nope. Sorry, I like it. All right, you're confused, but you, but you've got your own pick figured out. So James, you're up. What's what's your pick? Well, you know, you know I'm taking a little bit of words from my man Cole, right? Last week he told us this Washington Commanders team and everything they are, everything they were better than the Minnesota Vikings, and I believed him. And I believe him this week. I think this is the game that the Philadelphia Eagles lose division game. The Washington Commanders make every game they play grimy, nasty, ugly. Let's go in the fourth quarter and let's see what happens. And the Eagles have not been in too many dog fights. And I'm on that Eagles bandwagon, fly Eagles fly. But this is the week that the Washington Commanders and Heineke beat the oh. Eagles and give them their very first loss of the season. Ooh. Ooh. No, I don't know what to do. With yes. that. Very stinky. That's all right, pony. <laughs> <laughs> James, the first game was 24 to 8. It wasn't close. Let me get my own emoji. Yes. <laughs> James, all of them. James, all James of them. missed dropping that poop. one right there. You missed that, James. <laughs> I, I hit him with this one. <laughs> you gonna drop it on me? I'm gonna get my own emoji on there. I like Come the on, pick. Man. I don't know if they can oh, win. Oh, I, okay. I think they cover hey, for sure. Hey, hey, sp <laughs> sprinkle a little. You got plus three ninety on that money. Hey, you don't you like the pick. Why are you giving them the money sign if you don't like the pick? No, what I think I think they're gonna cover. No, I like the pick. I don't know if they're gonna win. I, they're gonna. <laughs> well, cover that's what he's sure. picking. He's picking a money line. I you know. don't like them to win. All right, then I'll go to these other two. But it's not poop. It's definitely not poop. All right, awesome stuff, you guys. If you agree with Cole or James or just want to do you, mad respect, all good. You know we support that. Hop on the Fatal Sportsbook app now. Get that plus money before kickoffs on Sunday. I love that segment. That's so much fun. All right, from underdog winners to daily fantasy studs, let's get into it here. FanDuel offers a bunch of DFS contests where you can win thousands of dollars by starting the right players. So right now we're bringing you ringers well worth their high price tag. We do this every single week. And the guy to do it for us is Jim Saunas. He's back with the goods. Jim, who's on your can't-miss list here in week 10? Thanks, Lee. So the headliner for week number 10 is going to be the Jags of the Chiefs. Now, you can get there with some value plays, guys like Zay Jones, guys like Christian Kirk and stuff like that. But I also want to get my studs here. That begins a running back with Travis Etienne coming in at $8,000. Etienne has been tremendous with an expanded role for the Jaguars. He now has 100 yards from scrimmage in five consecutive games. And in his three games as a legit feature back, he has a 54% red zone share. So good touchdown equity. And I think the Jags can keep things decently close here, which would be a great thing for ETN. In that same game, I want to go to quarterback with Patrick Mahomes coming in at $8,500, and we just don't have a lot of ton of high upside quarterbacks on this slate. Mahomes very much is that guy. The Chiefs struggling to run the football right now, which has led to massive volume from Mahomes. The Jags defense, not one we need to fear, so Mahomes once again firmly on the menu in week number 10. I want to close things out, though, with Saquon Barkley, $9,500. Well worth it as he squares off with the Texans. The Texans are the lead worst defense against running backs so far this year. It happened last year as well. And Barkley is a six and a half point home favorite. He's got a massive role coming off a bye. You're not going to find a spot better than this. So Saquon Barkley, well worth that high tag for this week. So Lisa, a lot of fun studs on the week 10 slate. And hopefully we can get to all of them via some value elsewhere on the slate. 
Yes, Jim. Yes. Uh, set your lineups at FanDuel.com. Follow Jim on Twitter as well, at Jim Sonis. And another reminder to check out his daily Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcast. Jim, also, always love having you with us. All right. More Ways to Win comes right back after this. Welcome back. You ready to have some fun and make some easy money playing a daily free game on the FanDuel Casino app? I know the answer is yes. Come on with me. Reward Machine is a daily free-to-play game that gives players a chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every single day. Yep, FanDuel's Reward Machine has already given away over $5 million in prizes to more than 250 thousand winners and you could be next all you have to do is log in daily and spin for a chance at rewards it's seriously that easy and like i said tons of fun so make sure to play reward machine for a free chance to win up to two grand every single day only on the fanduel casino app it is week 10. We are about to kick it off. That is a wrap. It's here. We've got you ready. Check out all the bets we talked about and so much more on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. And remember, we've got your back every single week. Join us Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right here on FanDuel TV. Thanks for hanging with us. Enjoy week 10. And as always, good luck with your bets. We'll see you right back here next week.